Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. In this third video in our series, we're going to show how you lock down an entity list to where a user can only see his or her own data. So, to begin with, this is a series. So, we've done a few things in this series. We've created our dataverse, we created our list. So, if you want to find out more about that, please look in the description to find out the previous steps that we've done. So, stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. Now, in previous videos, we've done it. We built a pretty robust solution in a very short period of time, less than a half an hour. So now we want to go ahead and put some cherries on the top and make sure you can only see your own financial aid applications. So pretty easy to do in Power Apps portals. Now the steps though are a little confusing at first. So that's why I want to go ahead and document those steps here in this video so I can point you to those later. All right, so let's take a look at the steps. First of all, we need to go ahead and add some records into our table. So we're going to create a quick mini application uh, in our solution. So I'm going to go over to our solution again. There we go. Okay, excuse me. I'm going to go back to make.powerapps.com. I'm going to go to solutions and I'm going to select this uh, pragmatic university solution that we created in video one. After I've done that, I'm going to select the application. Uh, there we go, App, the uh, student aid application object. So we're going to select that. To enter some data, we're going to use a form. Now, a form is how you can use it. It's used in model driven apps and it's also used in Power Apps portals. We're using it for the purpose of this, of just kind of staging our application, getting it ready to go. So let's go to forms and I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new form. So let's go ahead and hit add form and I'll create a main form here. Now, you can also piggyback this main form that you already see here. I'm going to hit main form. And this form is going to be used for the purpose of our Power App portal. We're going to use this especially in our next video. We start to kind of build some stuff out. But for the purpose of this, we're going to keep this very, very, very simple. The first step, you see I have application number. Let me go ahead and make that read only because that is an auto number that will automatically increment and I don't want my users entering in an application number. Next, I'm going to go to our ABC right here, our field list. For, to, for quick brevity, we can also say, don't show me the default, only show me the custom stuff, and then it only shows you the stuff that you want to add that, that might be important. So let's go ahead and add in, um, let's add in a few things here. Let's add in the, the uh, award amount, maybe the status of the application, uh, household income, the um, housing assistance flag, the signature, and the student. All right, we're going to keep this really simple right now. We're going to pretty this up, don't worry, in our next video we get the form. Don't worry. But we are going to make it prettier in our writing term also. So we have everything but these base columns when I went to custom. Okay. So with that done, let's hit save and then publish. Okay. And then now let's go ahead and add a record. Okay. So to do that, uh, once I go back here, well, okay, it's, it's spinning right now, getting published all out that up there right now. I'm going to go back to the previous screen, which sometimes you'll notice the back button isn't here. So in that case, just hit the back button in your, in your browser as long as you have it published successfully. In my case, I'll do it more than once, looks like. Oh. I'm also, by the way, one more thing I forgot to do. It's called main form, which is really confusing. Let's go ahead and change this to uh, portal web form. So we can kind of keep track of those. I'm going to click in the white area there. Oh, there we go. Okay. And hopefully now, there it goes, uh, portal web form. I'm going to save and publish again. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. And then again, there's no back button this time. Some, some Generally, you have one, but right now we're not have, we don't have one. So I'm going to hit the back button a few times to get back to the main screen. All right. There we go. So now to enter data for the student application, I'm going to go to the data tab. Now we can also create a quick model driven app, which only takes about five minutes to do, but we're going to skip that step for the time being. I'm going to go to data and I'm going to hit add record in the top. And I just want to kind of see a few records here. First record I'll create, I'll say there's no awarded amount yet, but maybe in this case, um, the student record. Hit the little magnifying glass there. There's Brian Knight AD. That's the record we created in our last video. Awesome. Let me go ahead and do that. And I'll, I'll say he hasn't signed anything yet. He's pending. Yep. Household income is $10,000, $20,000. There we go. Or $2,000, whatever. And let's make the, uh, 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 that he, is, he has not been awarded anything at all yet. So he's still kind of pending right now. And he has signed it. Something like that. All right. 
We'll hit save and close. And now the record is now back in here when I hit the refresh screen, refresh data. Okay. I'm also going to add one more for somebody else. Let me go ahead and add, uh, I'll call this, this is going to be for a different contact. So for my student in this case, I'll hit the little magnifying glass. I don't have that student. So I'm going to hit new contact to create a second record. And we'll just call this just Bubba Smith. Okay. That's good enough for time being. I'll, I'll give him an email address of Bubba at Bubba.com, something like that. And hit save and close. And then he transports over here. And I'll go ahead and have him sign his, his application. Again, this exercise we're doing right now is just to get at some sample rows inside of our table. So I'll hit OK. And again, I'll hit Refresh. And we now have two records inside of our list. So we have some sample data now inside of here. Now we're ready to go ahead and go back to our entity list here. And you'll notice that if I hit Refresh, that you may or may not see the data now. There we go. I'm actually seeing the data. It's all based on the cache. So it's been more than 15 minutes since I hit refresh last, so we now got the latest cache. If you don't see it, you can go back to your application right uh, here it is, and you can hit Browse Website, and it will do the same thing. It'll go ahead and plush a cache and reload it. So right now, I'm seeing two applications, one for student uh, Brian Knight AD, and then one for Bubba Smith. I only want to see Brian Knight AD, so we know we're successful if that happens. So for our next step, we want to isolate and only see Brian Knight. So I want to start by selecting this, this, web, this uh, entity list right here. And when I go to settings right now, we'll see entity ta or enable table permissions. I'm going to flip that to true. And then I'll hit click in the white area to save it. Okay. And then once I do that, I'll hit browse website. And let's see what the results of that were. There it goes. It reloads. And do I have anything? Oh, drum roll. Okay. No, I don't have anything right now. And that's because I don't have permissions right now to configure. So we need to fix that next. So the next step is to basically say, how do I get from an application to Brian Knight? That's what we have to specify and who is Brian Knight. All right. So to do that, we can go to the uh, go back to this, this application here called Portal Management. If you want to find out how to get there, you can go back to make.powerapps.com. And after you create the portal, you'll see the application down below. And it is called, oh, I need to go to the right, the right uh, environment here. I think it's this guy here. Hopefully, there it is. It's called Portal Management. That's how you, that's how you launch the app. And when you launch it, it looks just like this. This is, a, this is our application. Uh, here are the templates we're using. All the stuff we did on the front end in the screen right Oh, where to where to go? All the stuff we did in our on our previous screen right here. Oh, right here, we can do almost over here. So I find it a lot easier to kind of piggyback over here and do a lot of stuff. Matter of fact, if I go to entity list here, you'll see the entity list we created a moment ago. Financial aid applications. We did this in our last video, and you'll see there's my view, there's my theme. It's going to use and all that kind of stuff is all here. We also can go into um, um, the, uh, under map view and show different items like that for longitude, latitude. But we'll come back to this. But there's a lot of cool stuff we can do in here. But you'll see that one of the uh, one of the item options you want under options, as you scroll down, is do you want to have a create button? Do you want a delete button? You know what kind of item actions do you want? So everything we did in the previous screen, we can do over here also, and you can add your own custom JavaScript code. So in our case, we're keeping it really simple. And you'll notice down here, okay, we have 25 records per page. Uh, you also have, if you look at this, we can see enable entity permissions, this table permissions we checked earlier. So that's already turned on. And we can actually customize the, the what the create button looks like, the entity permission looks like here for uh, empty list, and all those kind of things can be turned on. So in our case, what we want to do is we want we all we have to do is turn the permissions on. So as a two-step process, first of all, uh, the first step, I'm going to create a web role. So to do that, I'll go over to under security here. First of all, we'll see contacts. There's my contact, Bubba Smith and Brian Knight AD. So to create a role, we'll go to web roles under security and web roles. All right, right now we only have the three web roles, okay, anonymous users and administrators. Let's go ahead and create a new one here and we'll call this just students. The website is our only website we have right now. All right, is it for only, only for authenticated users? Yes, it is. And then I'll hit uh, save. Now we can also hop over to related and find out 
what users have this role. I'm going to hop over to users, and I'm going to grant the two users, Bubba and Brian, rights to this as well. So I'll hit add existing user, and I'll hit the magnifying glass, and there are our users. If I search for Bubba, oh, oh it's actually doing something wrong here. It's actually doing users and not contacts. Let me go to related and contacts. That's what I want to do. So I'll hit add existing. And I'll type, look for look for the magnifying glass here again. And there is Bubba and Brian. Boom. And boom. And hit add. So now Bubba and Brian are part of this new web role called, uh, called students. Now we also could have access that under contacts. We can select Bubba Smith. And you'll see as you scroll down, uh, this is all of Bubba's information. And we can go to related. And if we go to web roles, there we go. He's part of the student web role now. Okay, so really easy to kind of kind of find a hundred ways of doing this. So we have our, our role created. We're going to put all of our students in this role, and they're going to see that stuff based on their rights. Our next step is to go to entity permissions. This is where you secure each of the tables or entities in our case. So I'm going to hit the new button up top, and let's go ahead and create. Let's call this one um, uh, financial aid permissions. Okay, we're going to look for student aid. Okay, where'd it go? There it is. Student aid. Oh, oh, it's up top here, sorry. I thought I called it student aid. I, I definitely did. I'm, I'm not seeing it. Let me zoom in a little closer because Brian has, does not have his glasses on right now. And as we scroll down, okay. I thought it was called student aid, but I could be wrong. I've had to check this a few times now. There it is, just a little hidden right there. Student aid, right there. Okay, and uh, it's for this website, obviously. Okay, and a scope. Now this is the important step here. What is the scope of the permission sets that we're creating? Is it a global permission where everybody in this web role inherits this? Everybody gets it, no matter what they want. Uh, a contact rights. Contact is where you only see your own records. Account is where you only see your own company's records. So Brian belongs to Pragmatic Works. So Brian can see any of Pragmatic Works's uh, applications in this case. Uh, parent, we'll use that later. So we'll come back to that a little bit later. So let's do contact in this case. And the contact relationship is how do I get from an application to that contact table? Well, we created a, a lookup before. And that lookup created this relationship you're seeing right here. So in case you're curious, it says pra, uh, B, uh, student aid, student contact. That corresponds with what we have over here. Okay, if I go to uh, student aid applications, we'll see that relationship right here under relationships. And as you scroll down looking for contact, okay, there it is. And that's the same name you just saw a moment ago. Okay. So with that now done, let's go ahead and say what rights does, does Brian have in this case. I'm going to give him a full meal, full meal deal for his own applications. He can delete them. He can read them. He can update them. He can also pin stuff to it. Uh, don't hit save and close. Hit save. And then our last step is, is who gets these right? Well, if you're part of the student role, so I hit, this, hit the uh, add existing role under web role. I had to save for, first before you can do this. I'll select students, hit add, and there we go. We have a role. Let's hit save and close because we're going to come back to this a little bit later. But now I'm going to go and uh, get refresh here. Now you might have to also do a, a, a full refresh there, but it looks like I don't have permission still. So let's go back to our, our first application we have. I'm going to go ahead and get all the configurations all synced up and then I'll hit browse. Sometimes it lets you just go ahead and hit it, just refresh and it works. I'll hit browse and let's see what happens this time. All right, it's browsing out. It's refreshing, and there we go. I'm only seeing Brian Knight's record. Now let's see how we can simulate Bubba's record also. So we have that contact called Bubba. How do we see his if we were indeed Bubba? So let's imagine we have a database full of contacts already, full of student applicants, and we want to go ahead and send them a login in this. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my table that we were already in, go back to contacts, and here's Bubba right here. So let's go ahead and select him. I'm going to send him an invitation into our Power App portal. So I'm going to hit Create Invitation. When I do that, 
I'm gonna go ahead and save that record. You can say, all right, when he when he accepts this invitation, what uh, what uh, um, web role is he gonna be associated with? When does this application this uh, invitation expire? Um, when he redeems it, what account is he gonna be part of it? Will he be part of Pragmatic Works or something else? Let's save this, and there you'll see you'll see web roles right here. So assigned a certain web role once he accepts this application, and then I'll go to Advanced, and you'll see this long number right here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that number because we're gonna use that in a moment. Let's go ahead and pretend that I'm not Brian anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and sign out as Brian. And now I wanna see how I can simulate Bubba. So I'm gonna redeem that invitation I just got, paste in that long code that we had a moment ago, and I'll hit register. Now Bubba is now registering. And I'm gonna create an account called Bubba. Okay, and I'll give it a better password. go and then I'll register him and now Bubba has an account with Bubba in it. All right, went and save that bad boy. Okay, now Bubba can also go through and say what language he wants, what outside providers he wants to use, but now this lights up for Bubba. And let's go to this financial aid application. Look at there, we got it. He can also go through and you'll hit the little drop down box and because I turned on delete earlier, he can also delete. But in case you don't want to go back to like where I went, was at before, which is in the screen right here, I selected that and I hit the delete option right there is available to him. So in case you don't want to do that, you can also go over to our entity list here. Okay, there's our entity list in the left side here. And we can select our entity list and we can specify here what he can do inside this view. So if we go to the over to options, is he available to, is he a valid uh, to, to delete? Can he do creates? All that stuff is all available to you. And you can see all those options there. So we'll, we'll come back to this in our next module where we're gonna add a create button to actually add new applications on the website. All right, so stay tuned. So far, guys, we have our, our first video. We created the entities. Our second video, we actually went through and we created our list that we're seeing now. And in our third video, we went and secured it. So in our next video, we're gonna go ahead and add some data to it through the website. So stay tuned.